You should have listened. To one side, half a dozen men, all large, filthy, and well armed. On the other, a lone figure, long hair wild about his neck and shoulders, easily half the age of his eldest opponent, and armed with only a heavy spade. You seem overmatched, old man. Friend took a confident step. The resemblance between the new arrival and their captive didn't escape his attention. You her father? Corvus nodded. How cozy. You came to die with her. These men had worked together for several years, and for all their bickering, they moved and fought as one. Even before Brent had finished speaking, there was a sudden lunge from one of the others. They'd used this tactic many times before, and it never failed to catch the target off guard. <laughs> But in a blur of movement, the spade flashed downward, striking the man's forearm edge on. The man stared, his eyes with tears of pain, at his arm and at the two separate ends that was once a single bone, now protruding through torn and mangled flesh. Friend stepped toward Corvus, his hand dropping frantically toward the hilt of his sword. (laughs) Corvus met him halfway, jabbing with the butt end of the tool. Friend, sword dangling from his scabbard, fell to the ground thrashing trying to draw breath through a crushed windpipe. The four other men charged as one, Varbin leading the attack. Four swords rose in the air, tucked in their hands, eager to kill the interloper. The environment itself conspired against them. One man fell, his boots entangled in a protruding root that he would have sworn wasn't there moments before. Corvus's spade landed point first on the base of his skull. Another thug pulled back to take a mighty swing, only to find his blade lodged in an overhanging branch, granting his foe a precious moment to dance aside. (laughs) Even as Corvus swung the spade with his right hand, his left darted out and grabbed for the man's wrist. By the time the man had hit the forest floor, ribs caved in by the edge of the tool, Corvus held the man's long sword in his other hand. (laughs) Varbin was next, falling to his knees, a shrub twisted beneath his feet as he plummeted earthward. The flat end of the spade rose up to meet him, spreading his nose across the rest of his face. Corpus finished the fallen man with a quick downward stab of the stolen sword. That left only one man unwounded. The final assailant allowed his sword to tumble into the dirt and drop to his knees. Yield! I yield! Very well. Corvus stuck the bloody long sword into the earth behind him (laughs) and reached out with his vacant hand and dragged the first man he'd struck, who stood staring at his ruined arm, to stand beside the one who'd surrendered. Then, keeping one eye upon the pair of them, he knelt down in the grass and hugged his shaking daughter to him. Did they hurt you, sweetheart? They they hit me on the head. Maloran twisted so he could see the blood-matted hair against her skull. It's all right now. Everything's all right. We are leaving here in just a few minutes. Can't we go home now? In just a bit, sweetheart. I promise. Corvus turned his own head so she couldn't see the burning in his eyes. Daddy has something to do first. And I need you to do something for me, Maloran. What? I need you to rest. Carefully letting her go, he rose smoothly to his feet. Siabis Arun Torah. With the incantation, Maloran fell into a restful, painless sleep. The prisoners blanched, falling back before the doom they saw etched across his features. Corvus turned to the uninjured man first. Who sent you here? No, n- no one. We're just, just wandering bandits. We... Corvus nodded once. <coughs> Corvus turned to the man with the severed arm, gesturing with the bloody tool at the quivering shape on the ground. As you can see... I'm in no mood to have my time wasted. Who sent you? What? I can't tell you. I can't. He'll... The man froze, his lip quivering, as the spade rose slowly to point at him. I doubt they'll be able to save that arm. But you have three other working limbs. At the moment. Who are you? The past 17 years had failed to rob Corvus of his flair for theatrics. Very deliberately... He allowed the spell that had set the roots and branches against his enemies to lapse. Fragon Vesterna Edafos. 
Murmuring the words of a new cantation under his breath, he released the spell even as he drew breath to answer his prisoner's terrified query. It was a simple illusion, easily mastered by the youngest apprentice of the first circle, but it was more than sufficient. For the span perhaps of a dozen heartbeats, he towered over the cringing soldier, encased once more in black steel and gleaming white bone, an iron-banded skull staring down upon its latest conquest. The mirage slowly faded. I am Corvus Rebane. Once the illusion had flickered away, the injured man was frozen, his shallow breathing the only sign that any life remained in him at all. <laughs> Tears ran freely down the man's cheeks, his face reddened for lack of breath. Why are you here? Who sent you? We'd wondered if you were dead, you know. After dinner there, everyone figured you'd be back for revenge. But it never happened. We... The man froze again as Corvus raised the spade and held it, tipped down over the man's left foot. Three limbs, remember? The man's face paled. Audris. Audris sent us. The ground tilted beneath Corvus's feet. Why? Is he headed here? The spade dropped an inch. No, 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 please, please. I don't know. I swear I don't. We were just one of a dozen scouting parties sent all over in Falion. I don't know which way he's going. I don't know. I don't. I I get it. Shut it. Whether or not the man was lying, any illusions Corvus had harbored that Chellenchire could somehow avoid the whole affair had been shattered. The first question is what to do with you. Mercy. I told you everything I know. Mercy. I beg you. Corvus nodded. Mercy, then. (laughs) (laughs) 